So let me explain to you what happened with Tom Cotton. Is he a senator or a representative? Why am I blanking on that right now? This is the most inopportune time to blank on that. Senator Tom Cotton. Yeah, he's a senator. Yeah, he's a senator. I think he used to be a congressman. Who knows? Anyway, so uh, Senator Tom Cotton, or as we call him here, Giraffe Boy, he uh, <laughs> he has a long neck. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. So he wrote an op-ed in the New York Times about, you know, what's happening around the country right now. There are many uh, protests for George Floyd and to stop police brutality. That's a spark that got people out there in the streets. I think there's a lot, you know, a lot more to that and it goes a lot deeper than that. But this is the Cliff Notes version I'm giving you here. Um, and there were, of course, instances of, of rioting and looting. And Tom Cotton, for those of you who don't know, is one of the most vicious neoconservatives that we have in the country. I mean, he's right up there with Dick Cheney in terms of, you know, his beliefs. And, you know, he's he's famously, like, defended Guantanamo Bay in an even stronger way than anybody else ever has, supporter of torture, supporter of all these, you know, illegal wars. So he's as big of an American exceptionalist as you could get, as big of a neoconservative as you can get, and what we learned with this New York Times op-ed is as big of an authoritarian as you could get. So he wrote a piece for, New for the New York Times, and I believe the title was, Mr. President, Send in the Troops. And in the article, he explains how, listen, we need to restore law and order, and we know for sure that the U.S. military can handle this. So, you know, let's deploy the U.S. military in the United States of America, effectively invading the United States of America, and let's shut this whole thing down. Now, one more night of looting and rioting. Now, of course, he tries to do the thing that, uh, you know, all these guys try to do, which is say, no, 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 no. <laughs> Me, bro? I'm totally for the peaceful protest, bro. I just want to stop the looters and the rioters, bro. Except Trump said the same thing. And then he gassed peaceful protesters to do a photo op with a Bible in front of a church. So, do I believe Trump when he says, I'm going only after the, the looters and the rioters? Of course I don't believe him. He proved the opposite. He gassed peaceful protesters. Do I believe Tom Cotton when he says, I don't know, we're going to send in the military on U.S. soil, but don't worry, it's only for the looters and the rioters. Well, 98 or 99% of the protesters are peaceful. 1 or 2% are violent, you're going to send in the U.S. military, who are not trained at all for domestic purposes, to go after the 1 or 2 percent? Just shut up. Shut up, you moron. God, it's he's so obnoxious, and it's so annoying, and it's obviously untrue, and I got a bridge to sell you if you believe him, when he says, like, oh, yeah, no, no, only the bad ones we're going after. Sure, sure. If you send in the U.S. military, here's what they would do. Stop protest, period. That's what they do. Clear the streets. That's what they do. So, in other words, Tom Cotton is saying, uh, you know that whole First Amendment thing and freedom to protest? Disagree. We're going to go ahead and go in the opposite direction. So, that was the whole point of his op-ed. That was the whole point, is to just call for rank authoritarianism. Now, as a backlash to that New York Times article, oh my God, the New York Times got hammered. They got ripped. They got obliterated. People were like, you know... What what wouldn't you run in terms of a right wing view? <laughs> Could you have like Himmler <laughs> defending Nazi Germany and say us, bro? P we love all viewpoints, bro. That's what we, that's what we got. Himmler, so it's, it's Himmler. He's just it's not, we don't agree with him, but he's, he's got all viewpoints. So people were going after them, and then I the New York Times. Sort of made it worse in a way, because they they did like a couple Weasley things afterwards. Like one was like, oh, we added an editor's note. <laughs> and then another one was like, um, it was actually kind of long. And it was saying like, oh, this didn't pass. We shouldn't have run this because it didn't pass our basic standards of like it in, in that it had many factual inaccuracies in it. And so like they tried to have it both ways in a way. Like they tried, okay, we'll keep it up. 
But then on top of keeping it up, we're going to say, hey, we shouldn't have even run it in the first place. So it's like they were trying to appease the right and the authoritarians, but also trying to, like, tell reasonable people that, like, hey, okay, we know he's a piece of trash. <laughs> so now, as, as a result of this, okay, you had the editor of the New York Times resign. Now, I don't know the backstory. I don't know if he resigned because he was embarrassed with the New York Times, like, trying to have it both ways after the fact. So, I don't know if he resigned in the sense that he's, like, defending, running the Tom Cotton thing, and now he's resigning and saying, you know, New York Times doesn't believe in free speech. I don't know if he's saying that or if, if there's some other motivation or, or reason for him resigning or if he was forced out and fired because they didn't like that he was cool with running it. I don't know the reason, but anyway, he he resigned. And so Tom Cotton went on Fox Business and he was asked about the whole scandal. And here's what he had to say. Controversy over Senator Tom Cotton's New York Times op-ed this past week, which was on violence in protests across the country. His piece Wednesday titled Send in the Troops called for an overwhelming show of force and sparked an online revolt at the New York Times. The Times issued a statement after it published it, saying this, we've examined the piece and the process leading up to the Republican, the, uh, the publication. This review made clear that a rushed editorial process led to the publication of an op-ed that did not meet our standards. Here to react right now is the senator himself, Senator Tom Cotton of the Armed Services, Intelligence, Banking and uh, Economic Committees. Good to see you, sir. Thank you so much for joining me, Senator. What happened with the Times op-ed? Was it rushed? <laughs> Hardly, Maria. I will say my op-ed didn't uh, meet the Times standards. It far exceeded their standards, which is usually uh, sophomore left-wing drivel. Uh, but here's what happened behind the scenes. Last weekend, we saw rioting, looting, really anarchy and insurrection on our streets. In Washington, D.C., uh, seven days ago, a uh, famous church was torched, memorials were desecrated, stores were looted. And I said simply last Monday that if the local police are overwhelmed by the numbers of these insurrectionists, if they need support from the National Guard, or if necessary as a last resort, federal troops under the Insurrection Act, and that's exactly what has to happen. Now, fortunately, that's what happened in most places over the course of last week. So what we saw yesterday was people exercising their First Amendment rights to demonstrate and to protest. But in the meantime, we published that exact argument in the New York Times. The New York Times editorial page editor and owner defended it in public statements. But then they totally surrendered to a woke child mob from their own newsroom that apparently gets triggered if they're presented with any opinion contrary to their own, as opposed to telling yeah, the woke children in their newsroom, this is the workplace, not a social justice seminar on campus. Oh, Mr. Oh, I'm against snowflakes. I'm, I'm tough free speech guy. Let's understand what's happening here. Tom Cotton wrote an article about how we should effectively suspend the First Amendment which has freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom to protest peacefully. And now he's crying for the First Amendment for himself. We did it. We just broke the irony meter. <laughs> well, it'll never, it'll never get crazier than this. The whole point of his article was like, we got to send in the U.S. military to stop what's happening in the streets. So, in other words, the whole Constitution thing, the whole First Amendment thing, suspend it, martial law, bring in the troops, invade the United States of America, shut down the demonstrations, it's gone too far, I don't agree with it, police state time, baby, authoritarianism time, baby, and then he gets a little taste of his own medicine of, sorry, this doesn't meet our standards, we're not going to run it. Oh, my free speech! My free speech! Yes! You've surrendered to the woke mob, good sir. Wait a second. You're the woke mob when it comes to the demonstrations in the streets. Because you said send in the military to stop them. That's what you are. You're against free speech. You're against the First Amendment. You're an authoritarian. So this story, I mean, oh my God, what it does to me. It drives me nuts. Now, let me be clear about something. I actually don't agree when there are left-wingers who say, take it down. Take it down. Listen, he already wrote it. It's already up there, okay? 
Of course you should leave it be. But the New York Times defense, when they were saying, hey, listen, we believe in all viewpoints here, just so everybody understands, so of course we're going to you know, run it, and he's a sitting senator, very powerful, so he needs his voice heard. But the New York Times is full of it when they say, oh, we believe in all viewpoints here, so we're going to let this one go. No, you don't. You don't believe in all viewpoints. Every single time there's a war, surprisingly, it's unanimous, and everybody at the, over at the New York Times is like, we think it's a good idea to do this war. They don't have any dissenting voices when it matters the most. So it's nonsense. It's trash. The idea, oh, there's some far left outlet. No, they're not. Don't be ridiculous. They end up doing propaganda for the establishment. Just like Fox News does propaganda for the Republican establishment. Just like MSNBC and CNN do propaganda for the Democratic establishment. You know, the New York Times services the establishment in a broader sense. Every single time there's a war, it's nonstop wall to wall. Yes, we think this is just. Yes, we think this is moral. It's left punching. So I think the thing that upsets me the most is not that they ran it. The thing that upsets me the most is that you and I both know Tom Cotton would actually not be cool at all with an outlet that really represented all viewpoints. You know that. What if there was an outlet that, you know, what if the New York Times said, you know, listen, yeah, we have some uh, viewpoints that are left of center, but not enough. We're going to bring in a communist. We're going to bring in a communist. We're going to bring in an anarchist. And they're going to write about how we should abolish private property. And they're going to write about how um, there are instances of property violence that are actually moral and ethical and that have uh, utility and help bring about positive change. So... Does anybody think that if the New York Times read an article from an anarchist or a communist that said, I'm in favor of property damage in these protests, that Tom Cotton would say, hey, it's free speech, bro. Let him, they, they represent all viewpoints. No, he wouldn't. He'd be tweeting about how, ah, oh, left-wing idiot paper, stupid. Why'd you, why'd you run this? This is crazy. You're running something crazy. So that's what frustrates me, is that all this concern trolling about freedom of speech, it only cuts one way. It's only, you say the most insane thing you could ever think of, a far-right opinion, and then when people go, hey man, that's kind of stupid. No, my free speech! My free speech! It's my free speech! My free speech! <laughs> you hate very free speech! No, I'm just saying that I think child labor's a bad thing. But it's my free speech to say that child labor's good, yeah! It's my free speech to say that every war ever that we've done should have been done even harder and stronger and let's invade more places. <laughs> he called for an authoritarian crackdown in the United States of America. He wanted the U.S. military to invade the United States of America, shut down demonstrations, effectively suspend the Constitution and the First Amendment, and now he turns around and says, where's my First Amendment? So, listen, they already ran it, you know what, keep it up, Don't I wouldn't put the Weasley little fucking editor's note at the end, oh, see, well, how, well, we thought it met our standards, but it didn't meet our standards, <laughs> but the response here is not, hey, pull it down, I don't like it. The response is, hey, keep it up, but just so you understand, Tom Cotton, you're a total idiot and an authoritarian and a massive hypocrite because you're screaming for First Amendment for you and you want to take it away from the protesters. And oh yeah, by the way, now we're actually going to live the values of we represent all viewpoints. And here comes the communists, here comes the anarchists, and by the way, even me, even me, I'm, I am a mild social democrat. My politics are in the center in the rest of the world and also among the American people. I'm, I'm the ultimate centrist in that respect. Just a mild social democrat and a non-interventionist in that I don't like doing any offensive wars. And even my viewpoint is nowhere near the New York Times. They don't have anybody representing my viewpoint working for the New York Times. So this idea that it's like, oh my god, they're a far left outlet... And, oh my god, the woke mob is canceling me. No, we just think you're a goddamn idiot, Tom Cotton, because you're an idiot, and you're an authoritarian. And you and I both know the second that they were to run articles from communists or anarchists, or people like me, or people to the left of me, Tom Cotton would never be cool with free speech for them. 
So I hate this stupid game, and it shows you how hollow it is. At the you had this whole online right wing culture that was all about screaming free speech because you had some pink haired college kids creating safe spaces. And they said, you know what? Forget your feelings. You're supposed to hear dissenting viewpoints. It's part of growing up. I'm all about free speech. I'm all about the First Amendment. And then we have an instance of a literal crackdown on the First Amendment and free speech and freedom to protest with a Republican president wanting to send the military into our streets. And all of a sudden, they flip their position. And ironically enough for Tom Cotton, he's flipping his position. He's crying for his free speech to write and tell everybody that we shouldn't have free speech. I have no words.